Today on Fresno State Focus, we break down the COVID relief funding categories for students getting money from the university. Also, we hear from professors who are back on campus and how they feel teaching face-to-face -face this semester. Plus, we have updates on Fresno State football, the game against UNLV, and how you can avo avoid buying fake Bulldog merch. Fresno State Focus starts now. Hello and welcome to Fresno State Focus. I'm Anna Cruz Lopez. And I'm Lily Gonzalez. Facing financial challenges and struggling to make ends meet? Fear not, Uncle Sam to the rescue. I talked with Fresno State Dr. Melissa Lee about the Emergency COVID Relief Fund and how the $46 million will be distributed to Fresno State students. There are gonna be three categories. For categories one and two, it is gonna be based off of your EFC. So if you submitted a FAFSA or a California Dream Act, it will be pulling off your EFC and your enrollment as of October 4th. So October 4th isn't here yet, but October 4th, we will run a report, whatever your enrollment status is, full-time, part-time, um, that's how we will allocate your awards. There is also a category three. So if you didn't file a FAFSA um, and you still have need, so you don't have an EFC, but you have need, because there are students who still have need who didn't fill out a FAFSA, we will be sending those eligible students a survey on October 5th. And all they have to do is fill out the survey indicating what their need is for, and they will get an award that we will review it. And if they're eligible, they get a reward on uh, October 11th. Okay, is there a specific amount that each student receiving this funding will be uh, getting? The priority of funding is for the neediest student. So the students who have an EFC of zero, um, or you know, EFC of zero, they would get the largest amount. Um, but as of right now, we're anticipating that for category ones, if you're a full-time student, you get 1,400. If you're a part-time student, you get 700. If you have an EFC of you know, below 5,846, 5, 5, so they're called what we consider Pell eligible. They're considered still low income, but they don't have an EFC of zero. Um, they get 500 for part-time, 1,000 for full-time. Um, and anyone outside of that, if you're not in categories one and two, but you have need, they can get between $300 to $600. Okay, so students will be broken down into th three separate categories. Yes. How do we know or how can we find out or verify which category, for example, am I in? How would I find that? So you would have to know what your EFC is. So let's say your EFC is 200. So then you know that you're, you fall in category two. It's gonna be based on how many units are you enrolled. So if you're an undergraduate student and you're enrolled in 12 units, you'd be considered a full-time student in category two, so you would get $1,000. Is there a reason why some students are getting money and others aren't? Is it just solely based on need? It is mostly based off of need. So the students who won't get any funding are students who may be in category three who feel like they don't, they don't have a need. They don't have a financial need. So they don't fill out that survey, then they wouldn't get the money. But if they have a need to say, oh, well, I'm paying for internet expenses, that's a COVID related expense. They could request for that funding, we will review it. And then if they were eligible, they would get that award on the 18th of October. That was Dr. Melissa Lee, Associate Vice President for Enrollment Management. Qualified students will receive $23 million this fall and another $23 million in the spring. The first distribution of the grant is expected to begin in the second week of October. Students who are in, in category one or two will receive their award first, followed by those in category three. Despite the long anticipation, many students say they already know how they're going to spend the extra cash. Um, more than likely, I'm probably gonna spend it uh, or save it uh, for the next following tuition or for book. Probably just personal bills and stuff like, you know, like, uh... But if I have anything left over from it, I guess I would probably, if not alcohol, uh, buy a couple new shirts. The financial aid office says grants will be awarded based on information. Students supply by October 4th. And although a FAFSA form is not required for this grant, they say it does help in determining students' eligibility category. School is back in session here at Fresno State. Reporter Noah Chavez hears from professors about what it's like returning to in-person teaching. 
art professor William Raines is eager to be back to his hands-on and social way of teaching. They learn from each other, you know, in that kind of community sense, as they learn from me. The music department is also back from teaching virtually. But how can teachers translate the sound of an instrument to their class through a webcam? To do it really well, I would have to have, and I, I do, uh, you, it's all in the gear behind me, an audio interface with professional microphones set up so that I can record, so that you can hear things. Music professor well, Stephen yeah, Ivany yeah, moved here from the yeah, East Coast to teach yeah, virtually during COVID. He had to change his whole way of teaching his band and orchestra. I didn't ever get to meet my students in person. I didn't ever get to meet my colleagues in person. I only ever met them behind a Zoom screen. And, and really it sucked a lot of the joy out of playing. Now, Ivany can teach the way he best knows how, face to face with his students and not over video. But they all stuck it out, they all came back, they all got better, um, they all worked really hard in the end. Um, and so it was, it was by far the most challenging thing I've, I've had to do. That's the sweet sound of classes being back in person at Fresno State. Know what chop is? Fresno State Focus. With up to 65% of classes returning to in-person learning, Fresno State plans to return more teachers and students back to the classrooms. While in lockdown, there were few ways to shop in person on campus. Now that we're back, students have a whole new place to shop for swag. Kevin Hernandez shows us. This is the Kennel Marketplace, Fresno State's newest store, which is located at Campus Point. The marketplace serves as the ultimate fan shop, which has a variety of different options for clothing, accessories, and other merchandise. The store also serves as an extra location for students to pick up their textbooks and even has its own Starbucks. We also have a um, shirt bar where you can customize shirts and sweatshirts with different marks of the campus. We also have a community space where students, faculty, and staff can gather, work on projects together, meet, or just hang out while they're waiting for their next class to start. During the grand opening in early September, the Marketplace hosted multiple events, from pictures with victory and timeout, to the ceremonial ribbon credit, which didn't go exactly as planned. I think overall, the goal is to really um, bring, a, bring a new shopping experience to Fresno State that, um, that offers that additional community space as well. Here at the Kettle Marketplace, they have everything you need, from a sweater to keep you warm in the winter, to a shirt that shows off your bulldog spirit, and even a nice, quiet place to study for your next exam. At Campus Point, Kevin Hernandez, Fresno State Focus. If you're not in the mood to go shopping in person, there's always the online shop. Now that Bulldog Sports are back, it's important that you know the difference between real and fake merch. The way to tell whether or not the apparel you're buying is legit is through this special tag. This tag means that the product is officially licensed by Fresno State and not made by a third party vendor. The hologram sticker you see in our apparel means that we are selling officially licensed apparel here at this store. When you purchase an officially licensed item, the money goes back to the university as opposed to buying through a third party that isn't officially licensed to use the Fresno State marks, logos, and verbiage. While it's only clothes that have the holographic sticker, it's still important to buy all of your Fresno State merch from an official store to support your fellow Bulldogs. Coming up on Fresno State Focus, see how students are getting in shape and taking care of their mental health in a fun way. Plus, we'll take a look at the Valley's first Thrift and Vintage Expo. Stick around because warmer weather is upon us. We'll be right back with your focus on weather. Here in the Valley, our colors are blue and our waves are red. Bulldog born and Bulldog bred. Generations linked forever by traditions that have stood the test of time. Inside our stadiums, we are one. This is our valley, and this year, we're doing it for you. At 
Fresno State, being bold means committing to something greater than yourself. It's learning by doing and nurturing leaders to advance our shared future. It's using research to create a better life for those around us and healing those who need us most. These are our stories because at Fresno State, bold begins here. Welcome back to Fresno State Focus. I'm Brooke Chow and it's now time for your focus on weather. Our beautiful campus today has blue skies and very minimal cloud coverage. Let's take a look at your nationwide satellite. There is scattered showers across our nation in the northeast, northwest, as well as below in the southeast. Now, if only that rain could circle back here in California because all we're experiencing is warm and dry weather. Let's take a look at your focus on air quality. North Valley counties are experiencing good air quality. However, mid to south central valley is experiencing moderate to hazardous air quality. So please keep that in mind if you are going outside, so be safe. Today's high in Fresno is 85 and majority of the valley will be mid to low 80s. However, even 79 in Porterville and Visalia, which is a huge change from what we've seen the past few weeks. Tonight's low in Fresno is 55 and if you're headed to Shaver Lake for some early weekend fun, it will be 40 degrees tonight. For your extended outlook today and tomorrow in Fresno will be in the 80s, but the 90s are just around the corner headed in to your weekend forecast as well as next week as well. So enjoy this cooler weather before you need to ditch the jacket and turn up the AC. I'm Brooke Chow and that was your focus on weather. As students begin to settle into their semester, campus events are back. The Student Health and Counseling Center hosts the 360 Wellness Challenge as Brooke Chow shows us. Fresno State Student Health and Counseling Center hosts the second annual 360 Wellness Challenge. During Traditions Day, the peer ambassadors of wellness volunteers were advocating and spreading the word on campus. The 360 Wellness Challenge was a program that actually we started during the pandemic, so it was really a program started in response to it. Some activities that are encouraged of students include going for a walk, listening to a podcast, or attending a workout class at the rec center. I think I will definitely incorporate exercising five days a week rather than my current two or three days a week. Fresno State has walking trails throughout campus Campus. That way students are able to earn their points just by walking to class. The people behind me are already following these red marker indicators. You may be wondering what they are. They're actually for the 360 Wellness Challenge and they're placed all around campus making a one mile loop. So that way you can get your one mile walk in. This is the start point and I better catch up to them. Brooke Chow, Fresno State Focus. That's 10 weeks filled with health and wellness thanks to the Student Health Center. There are even gift card prizes at the end of the challenge. This week's Fresno State United Story and Fraternity Council is having recruitment on campus. Karina Guevara is outside the Student Union where it's happening all week. Oh, okay, got Hi, it. yes. I'm here outside in front of the USC, where music and fraternities have been out here all week recruiting and socializing with students, being able to recruit. And I'm here with Brittany Ramirez, who's the president of Lambda Sigma Gamma Sorority Incorporated. Brittany, it's nice to be with you here. Hi, I'm going to be here. Yes, uh, how will we recruit this semester with safety protocols? Yeah, so we're definitely trying to follow um, safety protocols set by the school. This means wearing masks, um, wherever we are, especially being inside, um, and then staying home if you know, you're sick and you don't want to be at school. Yeah, 
Um, I, I know I can speak for everyone that we're all so excited to be out here in person again. It's definitely hard to do um, online. So everyone's just excited and we're ready to get back. Thank you so much, Brittany, and we wish you best of luck this semester with Christmas and Fresno State in Devara, Fresno State Showcase. Meeting new people in college can be fun. Students can socialize with others by sharing laughs and making memories. After weeks of planning, Fresno State USU Productions is excited to bring back their speed friend-giving event. This semester, it was hosted in person at the USU. There were games, prizes, and new friendships made. Event coordinator Whitney Ballard is excited to host this event. They were already talking before we started. I was like, oh wow, like they're already like wanting to get to know each other. Seeing everyone smiling really made us happy because that's what we put on events for, is for students to enjoy and just come together and have a good time. The USU Productions plans to continue events like this for students who are not able to experience face-to-face -face connections. To know more about upcoming events, you can follow them on Instagram, USU Productions. People from all over the Central Valley came together for the first annual Central California Thrift and Vintage Expo. Local vendors and artists had their clothes, artwork, and jewelry on display inside the Commerce Building at Fresno Fairgrounds. Giveaways and raffles took place every half hour. This expo will be back next year. A new shoe business in Madeira has come a long way. After recently opening up, they've had plenty of success in their community. Karina Guevara shows us. Okay. Abraham Vasquez is the owner of this place, the Come Up Kicks. He started selling shoes from home and at pop-up events. Now he has his own place in Madeira. He wants to give back to the community that he grew up in. Like this, um, this Christmas we're gonna have like a toy drive. I think we're already locked in a deal with some guys, so we're gonna do like try to give like 200 toys away to the community. Vasquez, along with his brother and cousin, owners of the Come Up Kicks, hope to expand their business in the valley. There's a lot of people in the valley who need shoe, uh, shoes, you know, and there's not too many stores around here, around like Madeira, that sell stuff like that. So the bigger, like the the more we. Uh, Stabilize here, the bigger we get, it's going to be easier for a lot of people to come and buy shoes. They have received plenty of support and positive feedback from their community. Thought it was cool to, you know, support somebody that's local and selling things that you don't really see much in the community and doing good things such as like buying, selling and trading for, you know, kids, families and people that live here in Madeira. Vasquez's business has grown a lot in the two years from working from home to his own shop. Not only does he sell, but also buys and trades. In Madeira, Karina Guevara, Fresno State Focus. Vasquez plans to open up another shop in Fresno. He hopes to make more collaborations to continue helping out his community. Many places around the valley honored the fallen victims of September 11th. As our Tony Salazar shows us, one veteran who was at the Heroes Parade vividly remembers that day. It's been 20 years. A plane has crashed into one of the towers. Since the 9-11 attack. But on days like this, it feels like yesterday. A time when people from all over the country come together to remember the nearly 3,000 lives lost. Patriotism, community, and giving back. Giving back. We saluted our veterans, law enforcement, people, first responders, and we paid homage to all of those who have paid the supreme sacrifice for our freedom. Of those that sacrificed is Adolf Reyes. I am from Fresno. I'm a Vietnam veteran. I'm also a Desert Storm veteran. Reyes says 9-11 is something that he will remember for the rest of his life. And I told my wife, that's a movie. Change the channel, that's only a movie. He says at first he wasn't sure if what he was seeing on TV was really happening. I knew we were in a complete different uh, situation. It really affected me bad. And after 34 years of service, Reyes now enjoys don't worry, don't worry. Being part of the Vietnam Veterans Band. Been with them about uh, maybe four years. 
and we're growing every year. That's a very, very patriotic for me. I enjoy doing that. Now the Kiwanis of Fresno tell me that they plan on putting more events just like these in the coming years. In Fresno, Tony Salazar, Fresno State Focus. If you would like to join in on next year's parade and get involved in remembering 9-11, a link to the Kiwanis website will be attached to the story online at fresnostatefocus.com. Coming up in sports, we take a look at some of the highlights from the football game against UNLV. Also, I talked with a martial arts sensei who taught me how to protect myself. Plus, we introduce our focus team members, Noah and Brooke. Stay with us. At Fresno State, being bold means committing to something greater than yourself. It's learning by doing and nurturing leaders to advance our shared future. It's using research to create a better life for those around us and healing those who need us most. These are our stories because at Fresno State, bold begins here. Success. At Fresno State, it's no secret. It's discovering new ways to change our world. It's creating opportunities as diverse as our community itself. It's in the distinction of our graduates as they lead us into the future. Success is no secret at Fresno State. It's our mission. Welcome back. I'm Noah Chavez with your focus on sports. The Bulldogs are now number 18 in the college football AP poll after their win over UNLV. The game did not start as expected as the Rebels of UNLV held a 21-9 lead in the early third quarter, but multiple offensive scoring catches by Jalen Cropper from QB Jake Hayner put the Bulldogs right back in the lead for the first time of the whole game. With the continuous back and forth during the remainder of the fourth quarter, the Bulldogs were able to pull away with two more scores to end the game 36-30. This week's game will be a heated one as they travel to Aloha Stadium to play the Rainbow Warriors of Hawaii. Fresno State's women's soccer team got a much needed win over the Mountain West rival Air Force. The Bulldogs won behind the scoring legs of freshman Kaylin Miller and Jalen Wright only minutes apart from each other. The shots came when junior Cheyenne Hodge one touch to pass to Miller for a goal. Seven minutes later, Wright would sink her shot past the outreached arms of goalie Sammy Baich. With this win, the Bulldogs' record will improve to an even 3-3-3 record. The Bulldogs' next match will be a home game against the Rams of Colorado State on Friday, October 1st. We remain in Colorado Springs as the women's volleyball team also played the Falcons. The Dogs were swept in all three sets against the Falcons for the first time since November of 2018. Some notable stats include redshirt senior Desiree Sukhov leading the Bulldogs in kills for the seventh time this season with a total of 12, along with Michaela Rice leading with assists at 26 for the season. The loss will drop the Dogs' record down to 4-6 and 0-2 and and in Mountain West play. The Bulldogs will host Colorado State at the Save Mart Center on Thursday, September 30th for Student Appreciation Night. With the Grizzlies being swept at home and on the road, this Wednesday's game would be the last home game of the 2021 season. Although fireworks were flying at Chachansi Park, there were little fireworks on the diamond as the Grizzlies would ultimately drop Game 2 with a loss of 4-2. The visiting San Jose Giants came into Chachansi Park for Game 2 of the Low A West Championship. In the fifth inning, the Grizzlies were able to tie the ballgame at two even as Julio Contreras and Colin Simpson were able to make it back to home plate. But ultimately, the Giants would score late in the seventh with two solo home runs to place the ballgame out of reach. And that will do it for this week of your Fresno State Focus Sports. I'm Noah Chavez. One Fresno State sensei grew up competing in martial arts and now he loves to teach it. Sensei William Cho teaches kickboxing and karate. He started training when he was just 12 years old. He also spent time in Japan to train. The main reason was for my own training and my own uh, uh, betterment of my knowledge for the, you know, the martial arts. And martial arts are forms of self-defense and attacks. The karate is basically a striking one. Uh, the weaponry is using the weapons like the Ninja Turtles. And the third one, Daituru, is basically joint locking up. The interesting thing is I have no favorite. You see, I love it all. His students say that's obvious, not only how he teaches, but also how many. 
We did a quick calculation uh, last week, how many students he's trained over uh, 25 years. And we estimated about 7,500. Boom, 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 one time. Up, 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 one, two, three. That's defense. That's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> so these are moves that Ceci Cho te um, teaches in his classroom. And he also trains fighters. I am training uh, three fighters to fight in October. So these fights are full contact. This is exactly what I'm teaching in my kickboxing classes. These are lessons Sensei Cho hopes his students hold on to well after they graduate. If you're interested in seeing Sensei in action, there will be a fight on October 2nd in Selma set up by Pack Fight. In other news, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, also known as MAD, came together for their annual event on Saturday. With support from law enforcement and members of the community, they all gathered together at Woodward Park to raise awareness and raise funds to eliminate drunk and drugged driving. One attendee says it hit home for her. We lost my niece, Anita, uh, Anita Quadro. She was a freshman at uh, Reedley High School in 2007, December, and she uh, was hit by a drunk driver. Uh, her and my sister were both uh, hit and uh, she fortunately passed away on December the 27th. Santo says her family has been coming to this for the past seven years in hopes of raising awareness while never forgetting victims of drunk and drugged driving. It is now time for you to meet Fresno State Focus team. First up is Noah Chavez. Noah is a graduating senior with a huge passion for all things news. Noah was born and raised in Fowler. He grew up watching the local news and that later inspired him to pursue a degree in broadcast journalism. Being able to inform the public, um, I've always been, uh, I've always liked being able to like give people information that only I knew at the time. I was a little bit of a gossiper in high school. After graduation, Noah hopes to report news in his hometown and inspire kids who may also want to become a journalist. And now it's time to meet another member of our team, Brooke Chow. Brooke is a senior from Oakdale, California, with a double major in communication and MCJ. During her time here in the Fresno area, she has worked with Fresno State Focus and is part of the Delta Gamma sorority, where she has met some of her closest friends, all the while continuing to work on her education in the MCJ and communication field. Being a double major, especially with communication and MCJ, is tough, um, but I love what I do, so it doesn't feel like work. It feels like fun and actually every day that I go to school I'm just absorbing as much information as I can. Brooke will graduate this May and plans to continue her career in journalism hoping to fulfill her dream of reporting and one day covering the Olympics. Next week on Fresno State Focus it's Hispanic Heritage Month and we take a look at the different programs and services at Fresno State. Plus, with the rise of crime in our community we take a look at campus safety and learn more from the Sheriff's Office. All that and more next week on Fresno State Focus. Have a great evening. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week.